The game was like cockle for Apple fans. Software updates for the operating systems at the company's Worldwide Developers Conference in June, and fall events focused on product refreshes. Well, Tuesday was at least the first of those fall events, as the company took the Steve Jobs studio to announce the next generation of iPhones alongside several other surprises. Let's recap all of it in brief. Starting with the service side of the business, we heard some news about Apple Arcade and TV Plus. Arcade will be integrated into a dedicated tab in the App Store that will feature new games on a monthly basis alongside recommendations, trailers, and editorial content like game guides and sneak peeks. Studio showed off new titles launching on Arcade. Konami showed Fragment and Troy Town from Japanese studio Q Games that will be exclusively on Apple Arcade. It's pretty safe experience with being honest here. Like classic Frogger, there are many obstacles in the way. However, now you can find power-ups, like this bomb, that you can use to clear the path ahead of you. You'll also notice we're collecting jelly beans. That is a fun and important part of gameplay. Capcom showed Senseki Into the Depths, a 2D game about diving in the ocean. Perhaps most notably, the game features sounds recorded underwater to really capitalize on that sinking feeling you might get while playing. While searching for resources, our explorer encounters a terrifying creature. Which is why it's ever important that you maintain your oxygen levels. Printer Interactive should have signed on Wild Hearts, a game that described as a play for a music video that's half racer and half rhythm game. Personally, I'm already sold and will be playing the game for sure at launch. The game will also be coming to PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch. The battle and storytelling are interwoven with the music, making sure you never miss a beat. One All month free trial. will be available September 19th, along with the service itself in over 150 countries. Thank you, Anne. Apple Arcade is a gaming a service unlike any other available. out there. The other hotly anticipated service in Cupertino, Apple TV Plus, also got some attention. CEO Tim Cook announced that the previously released trailers for The Morning Show and for All Mankind have been viewed over 100 million times, with The Morning Show as being one of the most watched trailers for any new TV show ever, according to Cook. A new trailer shown off for C, a drama starring Jason Momoa about a world where everyone is blind and sight begins to be restored to some of its inhabitants. Centuries from now, almost all humans have lost the ability to see. Some say sight was taken from them by God. To heal the earth. For the few who remain, vision is only a myth. But after so many years, the power of sight has returned. What is it? Something so different. The children, they have the ability to see. My children. They have power that we would call magical or evil. We must protect them. For centuries, we feared this day would come. The evil of light once almost destroyed the world. And now it has returned. Find the children who can see. And bring them to me. Those three shows join another five. That will be available at TV Plus's November 1st launch, with more which is launching on a monthly basis. The service will be available in over 100 countries for $4.99 a month, with a one month free trial and a year available for free for the purchase of a new iPhone, iPad, or Apple TV. Speaking of the iPad, the entry level iPad now has reached the 7th generation. It now has a 10.2 inch retina display along with an 8010 fusion chip, an 8 megapixel camera, and gigabit LTE in the cellular model. New additions include the smart connector with compatibility for the full-size smart keyboard and the 100% recycled aluminum body. Unfortunately, it still only supports the first generation Apple Pencil and is available to purchase now for $329 or $299 if you're an education customer and it ships on September 30th. Similarly, the Apple Watch is now on Series 5, a new OLED on the display with LTPO technology that lets it refresh dynamically from 60Hz to 1Hz to improve power efficiency and maintain the Apple Watch's standard 18 hours of battery life. Watch facing and workouts in the workout app have also been tuned for the new display. Oh, and there's a compass now, if you want that along with sleep tracking, which is a major turn off for this Fitbit user. Let's talk cases now. An aluminum is available in silver, gold, and space gray, made with entirely recycled material. In gold, space black, and power stainless steel, 
second Nashua model in titanium in this brushed space, brush space with black with a diamond like Here's five will be available in ceramic. Evaluations are also in place from Nike and Hermes again, with Nike offering its now standard sport bands, sport loops, and watch faces. The Hermes collab brings its design sensibilities for new color rock brands, featuring a print on the other side, along with a new handcrafted black leather band. It's available to pre-order now and ships on September 20th, starting at $3.99 or $4.99 for the cellular version. The Series 3 version is also still on sale for a new lower price of $199. This watch tells time and takes phone calls. This watch tells time and turns on lights and opens up doors. This watch tells time and communicates with satellites 12,427 miles above the Earth. It wakes you up and gets you onto subways and plays every Elton John studio album Hey Siri, play Tumbleweed Connection. Ever recorded. Play Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Play Mad Men Across the Water. This watch tells time and sets timers and sets your pace and warns you when it's too loud and texts your friends and opens portals kidding and tracks your distance underwater and starts competitions and accepts challenges and tracks your workouts and tells you which direction you should be going. And reminds you to breathe. And has an app that measures the exact timing of the electrical waves traveling through the upper and lower chambers of your heart, otherwise known as an electrocardiogram. So in conclusion, just to reiterate, this watch tells time, among other things. Now on to the main event, iPhone. I expect that Apple's keeping the same scheme used last year, the two lines if you will, the 11 and the 11 Pro. Starting out with the 11, it gets dual cameras this year with a 12 megapixel standard f1.8 camera at 26mm and an ultra wide 12 megapixel f2.4 camera with a 2x optical zoom out. The way the hand is extremely small in the camera app, with a frame for the standard camera being shown in focus with a wide angle camera lens being superimposed beyond it. Other features include portrait mode not working with pets, and the night mode that turns on when you're in darker situations automatically. Essentially, it uses adaptive bracketing based on the preview you see in the camera app, and features seven images together to get your final shot. The flash is also 36% brighter this year. Stabilization has been improved on the video side to be absolutely crazy. It requires a full resolution up to 60 frames a second, with slow-mo, time-lapse, and extended dynamic range. You guys quickly take a video from the photo mode by holding down the shutter button. Flip the phone around and you see a 12 megapixel true depth camera that can zoom out just a tad bit better in landscape mode. Video also gets spun up to 4K at 60 FPS this year with slow motion for a new feature Apple lovingly dubbed slow fees. That's definitely not going to catch on. Essentially, these are selfie videos that are in slow motion because that's the thing you can do now. The 11 also has a 6.1 inch liquid retina display that's basically unchanged from the 10R with spatial audio featuring Dolby Atmos technology. Inside this A13 Bionic Plus, just like the 11 Pro, Face ID is also a bit faster and it can now withstand 2.5 hours underwater. Better Life is also bumped up by an hour more than the already insanely good Better Life on the iPhone XR. The iPhone 11 starts at $699 and is available in 64GB, 128GB, and 256GB capacities. For those keeping track at home, that's $50 less than the iPhone XR was at launch. Players are open now and on ship on September 20th.
the iPhone 11 Pro and the Pro Max. I'm sorry, but Pro Max is the single worst name for a smartphone this year. Like, while you do the Apple. They have three little cameras. A 12 megapixel wide angle 26 millimeter f1.8. A 12 megapixel ultra wide 13 millimeter f2.4 with 120 degree field of view. And a 12 megapixel telephoto 52 millimeter f2.0 lens with optic image stabilization and focus pixels. Optical zoom works at 0.5x, 1x, and 2x. This new physical deep focus that uses machine learning to take a further and lower to medium light with more detail. It essentially composites nine images for a short, for a second day before hitting each other, and the longest photo when you hit each other button to assemble a photo with added detail and low noise. The Pro Max has a 6.5 inch Super Retina XDR display, where the Pro is slightly smaller at 5.8 inches. Both are 15% more efficient with 1200 nits of brightness. The battery life improvements for these are insane though. The applicants of the Pro gets 4 hours more battery life than the 10s, while the Pro Max gets 5 hours more battery life than the 10s. The rest of the lineup has also gotten power shops with the iPhone 8 selling for $49, the 8 Plus at $549, and the 10R at $599. <laughs> This has been in brief. I've been Andrew. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more. And I'll see you in the next one. Dreamer, dreamer, dreamer.